All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create the finishing operation that got started over here. So first we did the roughing and now we're creating the finishing operation in the three axis. So come over here and select the surface high speed dynamic opti rough. Make sure it's selected and hold control and hit C. That will copy it and then come over here and select right next to the red arrow. Hold control and hit V. So that will copy that operation twice. Now obviously we're not creating two operations of the same. So go back to parameters over here and we're going to go to toolpath and change that to finishing. And also we need to make sure hybrid is selected. Now the nice thing about all of these features is that it actually shows you a little graphical area where what that toolpath does or what that feature does. And for this one, we're doing exactly what the graphic shows, which means it basically covers the surfaces as well as all the walls and it shields all around them. And that's what you want to do. So now that you have that selected, go to tool and we're going to select for a quarter of an inch ball end mill. If you don't have that filtered for it, go ahead and filter for that and select OK. We're going to change for the comment surface high, uh, surface high speed and it's going to be hybrid finish. OK, and then we're going to go to the holder and we're going to keep it as default. And let's go to cut parameters for the cut parameters. The only thing I want to change over here is the 3D step over. So I'm going to change that and make it a lot smaller, 0.05. The reason for that is if I, the smaller I make this, the better the surface finish. If I make this hot big, you're going to see a very bad surface finish. Now, even 0.05 is not a great surface finish, but it still allows me to get rid of as much material. Remember, uh, even though this is a finishing operation, all I'm trying to do by these two three axis machining operation is get rid of as much material as possible. So it doesn't quite have to be this low, but it's good just to get rid of as much material as possible. Make sure to change the walls to both zero and the floor to zero. We don't want any material left over on the floors. Again, if you really want to leave some material there so you can come back and finish them, it may not be a bad idea. If you want to leave some materials on the walls, for example, one thou over here and one thou here, I'll go ahead and actually leave them there this time. This way you can come back and see um, how you can finish them off in uh, the when you create the blade expert operations. Um, if you want to get rid of as much material as possible, uh, again, I would highly suggest to just make sure that these are zero. It, you would only leave them as 0 0.01, uh, leaving 10 thou. If you want to just see what's being machined in the blade expert a little bit later. But if this can get rid of some material on the three axis, well, guess what? I want to make sure that it does that. So that's the main reason why I want to make sure that these are zero, not 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. Okay. So for the tool containment, I want to make sure that this time it's on the outside and I'm going to change that to 0 0.1. Okay. So the tool is going to start 0.1 on the outside of each of the entry and the exit. And that's really good to have that because it allows you to make sure that most of the material, even on the outside, there's no burrs left over. But I want to make sure to uncheck add offset distance to the tool radius. Otherwise, it will add that to the tool radius and it will become 0.1 plus the 0.125, which is 0.225. Okay. So for the transition, we're going to leave it the same. Steep and shallow, we're also going to leave it the same. And link of parameters, we can leave it the same as well. So the only thing I want to change over here is come over to arc filter and tolerance. So I want to change, I want to first check the line arc filtering settings and change this to 25% and this to 75%. Again, I'm not going to detail of why I'm doing all of this or details of all these options and what they are because these are things I've already went through in detail in previous DVDs. So if you haven't seen any of these DVDs, please uh, pick one up and get yourself more familiar with three access machining prior to four or five access machining. Okay. So I'm going to select apply and okay. And I'm going to go ahead and run the regenerate the selected operation to make sure it creates my toolpath. Okay. Because obviously since I copied it, I've changed a lot of things over here and MeshRecam needs to generate a toolpath for that based on the settings and the tool and all the features I've selected inside the parameters. All right, so we'll give this a second until it generates the toolpath for us. All right, so now that it's completed, let's go ahead and make sure that they're both selected by selecting the toolpath group and select verify that to open up the master cam simulation. Now, if you don't have it separated in two colors, all you need to do obviously is come over here under color loops. These are things that I expect you guys to know, but some things I'll mention anyway. So make sure to separate the two operations for the two color loops. 
I'm going to go ahead and forward just one operation by selecting this button right here. All right, and then I'll go ahead and play out the second operation. So there's the first operation. And if you want to just go ahead and play out the second operation, you will see that it starts out right on top and it's still going very fast, but you can see it is going, it's basically uh, getting rid of all the leftover material um, and finishing off the part. Now I can make it a lot better surface finish, obviously, um, but uh, for our sake, we are going to focus on that in the blade expert in the next uh, video. But for this one, we just want to get rid of as much material as possible, like I said, so the next three or four videos, we we're focusing on roughing and finishing the part using Blade Expert. As you can see, it's almost done. And what I'm going to do while it's doing that, I'm going to go to File, Option, and I'm actually going to change the color of that second operation from blue to something a little bit lighter. Maybe this little, this blue right here and select OK. If it asks you to save the setting to configuration file, you can save it or you can keep it the same. I'm going to go ahead and save it under VP Pros and select OK. And there you go. This way you can see the operation a little bit better being a lighter blue rather than a dark blue. All right. So you can see that the part is not quite done. And the main reason for that now, if you look at it just like that, you might think, OK, well, the part is done. It looks like it's done. Not really. The part is far from done. Uh, you're only seeing it that way if I go to my view and place it to the top view. It's done if you're looking at it from the top, whatever the tool can reach without going underneath the blade. As you can see, if I go underneath the blade, there is still all that material that's left over. All right. Now, remember, this is your stock that you're seeing over here. But if I go back to home and select the workpiece, which is my finished part, see how on the left side, everything's machined. But on the right side, there's still that blue. Now, if I go ahead and make my stock, okay, if I click it once, it's going to go uh, clear. And if I click it again, it will disappear. You're going to notice that there's the, all that material at the bottom that my tool can't quite reach if the tool just comes down from the top. That's why I need the 4 5 access blade expert to machine that for me. So if I select that again, you'll notice everything in blue is what your uh, part or your tool could not machine. Now, we could have actually machined most of this part right here by changing some of the features. So we'll wait for that until later and see if we still need to do that. Now, I might be able to machine those in my Blade Expert so I don't have to come back and change some of my settings to machine all those leftover materials that are over here. But mainly, everything that's left over is on the right side of each of the shrouds and the splitters. So we'll get started with Blade Expert in the next video.